Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Sophie Torres and I'm Vice President of Policy and Business Advocacy at the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber. Um, we are really excited to have everyone today here for a virtual town hall. Not only is it on Zoom, but also we're streaming it live on our Facebook page as well. Um, I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat, raise your hand. Um, and so we're really excited today for this event. We're gonna, we have General Juan Ayala, um, Dr. Erica Gonzalez, and Denise Hernandez, who will be discussing what the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber is during, doing during this time of crisis, but also how we're impacting our members and our community and why it matters. We will begin in a moment with General Ayala, but just a quick housekeeping rules, as I'm sure everyone is aware, we've been, um, if you should, you have a question or comment, please type it in the chat or in the Q&A box, um, or you can click the raise your hand button as well. There'll be an opportunity for questions at the end. Like I mentioned, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube page as well. Um, a link will, of the recording will be sent out to all those who are registered. Um, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, we also have Philip Sanchez, our membership specialist, um, who will be introducing himself in the chat should you have any questions regarding membership. Um, but of course, it is my honor to welcome General Juan Ayala. General Ayala, the floor is yours. Yes. Hey, good evening, everybody, and I really appreciate you uh, coming on. Um, I'm going to give you a, a short brief, uh, and I'm not going to tell you what you already know. It's uh, It's been challenging, uh, but I think that uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, we're, we're moving forward, we're being flexible, we're looking ahead, and we're doing everything we can to add value to your organizations and, to most importantly, listen to you. Um, for our members, I've tasked our, our staff, uh, our small staff now that we have here at the Chamber, uh, that the members are the priority. And so we want to keep it that way. And of course, we'll always welcome your feedback. Um, a couple things that I want to, uh, you know, right away want to cover is uh, the amount of webinars we've done. We've done approximately 10 of them, and they're all structured with uh, <clears throat> some of what we heard back, uh, some of the feedback from some of the members, and also what we're hearing uh, from surveys and other issues. Uh, and they've ranged everything from social media to how to get an SBA loan to the PPP process, um, to how to do business with the government, how to do business with the military. Uh, we've got some health uh, uh, ones that have covered health issues. And so I think there's a heavy emphasis on uh, our members. Um, we've had over 700 registrants uh, on, on these webinars. Uh, and we've also hosted them along with elected officials, Henry Cuellar, uh, Texas Senator Jose Menendez, and uh, we're looking to do more. Um, we did the first ever uh, webinar, I believe, in Spanish, uh, and we've uh, really initiated and spruced up that good relationship with the Asociación uh, de Empresarios Mexicanos, AEM, that's here, and also uh, with the Mexican consulate, which I think uh, we're going to do more uh, in order to entice uh, those businesses, Mexican-owned businesses uh, that are here in San Antonio. Um, but we're uh, also exploring other opportunities uh, in the future. Um, we've done uh, events with uh, other chambers, and we've got some coming up. I'm not going to read them to you. You'll see them there on the screen. Uh, we've also uh, had uh, you know, small, a lot of small business uh, webinars, a lot of small business discussions with um, Ramiro Cavazos uh, and others, Lift Fund, um, that we have done. Um, the other thing that we've done is uh, we've increased our, our social media presence with blogs, uh, with uh, just announcements. Uh, we try to send out information uh, that will help uh, our small businesses in, in, in a form of resources. Um, the other thing is I participate on, I've been participating, uh, Sophie and I, uh, on a call, a weekly call with all the Texas Hispanic Chambers of Commerce. And uh, from yesterday, uh, we're going to lead an effort here in the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce uh, to reapply or to reinvigorate, and we have to do it quickly, uh, the, uh, the funding for um, nonprofits, specifically 
overseas, which is like us. However, I believe there's others uh, in our membership that are also these types of, of, um, of members. We've increased our social media presence through blogs, as I said. We've got a newsletter we, we initiated again. And again, we continue to stay, uh, stay flexible and uh, we always look for your participation and we always look uh, for your input. Final thing I'll say is that we have reached out with phone calls uh, because that's all we can do at this point uh, to our members. And despite of what's going on right now, uh, you know, we've had about 11, uh, uh, about six or seven actually uh, new joins. And then we reached out to a lot of our members that have left us in the past, not just this year, and they're starting to trickle back in. But again, it's all dependent on how we support you, and you have to tell us that, and we'll take all the feedback, all the, all the um, constructive criticism, and that's what we're here to do. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, General Ayala. Oh, one, one more thing I, I, I forgot to say. Leadership is not canceled. Uh, we have uh, Victoria uh, Shoemaker and Erica who have done a great job uh, being flexible and bringing on our leadership classes, uh, uh, you know, virtually. And I, I've been really uh, surprised at how good they are, uh, even though we're looking at each other uh, through a screen. Uh, and so uh, I'm very proud of the staff. Uh, they're working very hard and uh, we'll continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you, General Ayala, for that. Um, on the screen, you, you saw some of the events that we've done, some of the webinars, some of the future events that we have, a very packed remainder of May, and then some other highlights that we have. We're launching a podcast that I'm sure Dr. Gonzalez will talk more about. We're also highlighting our members that are making a difference, especially during this challenging time. Um, we've created a, a special campaign on Fridays where we're making an effort to making sure we're highlighting those people that are really making a difference in our community. And as the general mentioned, leadership is not canceled. And I think that's one of the things we're, we've been stressing and that's another effort that we're doing, not just with the Latina Leadership Institute, but also with our Alexander Briseño Leadership Development Program who just finished up accepting applications and also leadership San Antonio. So it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Erica Gonzalez. She is president and CEO of STAMP, which is the South Texas Allergy and Asthma Medical Professionals. She's also our chair for 2020. And so we're really excited to welcome her. She's a pillar in our community and does a lot of things. Um, she's also the chair for the commission, the women's commission um, that the mayor has. So Dr. Gonzalez, the floor is yours. Let me unmute myself. Thank you, Sophie. I, I appreciate it. I do want to thank the general for all the hard work that he's done. Um, he's only been with us for about three months, but I think that like most of us in this time, um, we have probably tackled more in these past three months than most people have in our positions over a full year. Um, so it's really been quite a challenge, but um, his leadership and his experience has been so integral to the success of the chamber and keeping our team together and moving us forward. Um, as most of you know, my central theme was power of our voice between the census and this being a presidential election year. I knew how important it was for our voices to be heard, not only as individuals, but as a community and as a Hispanic business community as well. Um, and yeah, I think now more than ever, we're realizing how important federal funding really is. I mean, it is helping us get through this economic crisis, through this medical crisis, and even an educational crisis. And so, you know, we're continuing to focus on the census being one of our big projects for the year. Um, as you all may recall, we started off this year strong with a chairwoman's breakfast. We had Dolores Huerta as our special guest. And she was phenomenal, very dynamic speaker. She engaged the audience, was very inspirational. Um, and even just recently having had her 90th birthday, this woman still has more energy than most people do in a lifetime. And she's still, you know, kind of leading and blazing a trail uh, for most of us, you know, to, to follow. Um, at that time, I had kind of laid out what I had envisioned the year to look like. Um, and of course that quickly changed when uh, the pandemic hit um, and we had to refocus our efforts and, and pivot what we were trying to do 
to help identify what were the current needs of our members. Um, and so with a lot of things, although the census is still a big focus for us, we had originally hoped that it would be a, um, you know, a boots on the ground, grassroots campaign. Um, obviously that wasn't gonna be an option for us anymore. So our two co-chairs, uh, Bernadette Feña and Olivia Cruz did a phenomenal job in converting that campaign for it to be 100% uh, uh, digital. Um, and they've done such a great job. We're proud to announce that San Antonio has reported, I think the last count was somewhere between 51 and 52% participation. Uh, San Antonio is leading the way in Texas. Um, and so, you know, I do think a lot of it is because of the efforts that people like our co-chairs are doing. Um, in addition, um, one of my bigger kind of platforms for the year was going to be a focus on mental health awareness um, and how that was important, not only in our business community, but among our professionals. Now that's definitely taken a different uh, a definition. And, and now that this is, you know, impacting everybody from our children, all the way on up. Um, social isolation, the social distancing can really take its toll on us and specifically for our small business members as we you know, try to figure out how are we gonna keep the doors open? How are we gonna keep the lights on? Um, how are we gonna keep our employees employed? Those are our new stresses that we're having to deal with and try to get through. Uh, we are going to be hosting a mental health um, during the COVID pandemic. Uh, webinar on Mar May 28th uh, with UT Health Science Center San Antonio. So we'll have some of their staff. Bob Rivard will be moderating that, that webinar. So we're looking forward to that and invite you to join us to learn a little bit more on how we can keep, keep uh, our mental health uh, healthy uh, during this time. Um, in addition, we are very happy to say that this week we will launch our first podcast. Um, so that was something that was an initiative for us uh, to try to get done this year. Uh, we were supposed to have had the launch uh, during our gala, as you all know that that had to be canceled for this year. And we were gonna kick it off with the conversation that I had with the Lotus Huerta, um, but we've changed our focus and we are going to start off with a podcast that really help us understand how the COVID pandemic has affected our small businesses, what that looks like for us uh, as far as economic impact and what can we do to help our small businesses get by. Um, and so this week we should be launching our first podcast with our a very special friend from uh, DC, Ramiro Cavazos, president and CEO of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. He's our first uh, guest speaker. Uh, we'll be doing this on a monthly basis um, and having uh, subject matter experts talk with us about different resources to help us get through this pandemic crisis. Uh, the other thing that we did um, shortly after uh, the COVID hit is we recognized early on that uh, the pandemic was going to have a disproportionate effect on our community, uh, not only because the Latino community um, often is in a, so a lower socioeconomic status than than other communities, um, but also because given our culture, we are a lot more touchy culture. We like to hug, we like to kiss, and that was gonna uh, spread the virus a little bit quicker in our community, uh, parallel to what we saw in Italy uh, with people who have similar cultures as us. So we launched the Con Corazon campaign uh, to give people a different option on how to still be able to greet their loved ones and their friends without you know, having to, um, hug or kiss and, and still kind of maintain that social distancing. Um, so we've done our best to try to be creative. Um, it is a difficult time for everyone. Um, they asked me to just comment a little bit on how I saw this uh, kind of uh, crisis uh, ironing out over the next couple of months. There will be a time, it looks like the um, transmission rate here in San Antonio has hit a steady state, which is good. Uh, we anticipated that the peak would be around this time, middle of May to early June. Um, although we can't necessarily say that we've hit our peak, uh, we're definitely decreasing in the uh, amount of transmission um, on a daily basis. Our cases aren't doubling as quickly as they were before. So that's a good thing. Um, however, we anticipate that in the fall we'll have another rise and we're going to see these rises and falls, you know, for the next 18 months or so. Um, and so the best thing that you can do as a small business is just to continue to follow the CDC recommendations and try to maintain your social distancing and, and really just keep whatever business model is working for you right now. Uh, make sure that, you know, that you're flexible enough to be able to 
you know, change the, the services that you're offering to make sure that you can uh, keep up with the ups and downs that we're going to be seeing. Um, with that, I do want to introduce Denise Hernandez, who is our chair elect. Uh, she's been my partner in crime for the past six months. I couldn't ask for a better sidekick. Uh, she is the Vice President of Development for True Flavors Catering, um, a business that has been impacted by this pandemic in, in ways uh, that most of us have not seen. Uh, Denise, since very early on, was a very uh, innovative in what they did with their business um, in trying to make sure that they uh, translated their services into something that was going to be able to be viable during this time. They had their drive through Fiesta and Cinco de Mayo celebrations. Um, and so, um, you know, we have a lot that we could learn from the stuff that they did. Um, and I want to hand over the floor to Denise so she can make a couple of comments. Hi, good evening. Thank you. Thank you for that great introduction. Um, and thank you to the Hispanic Chamber. We've got a small team right now who has been working very, very hard to make sure that everything that the Chamber puts out and everything that we do benefits and serves the community. And that is what we are about. We are the people's chamber. And I like to say that a lot because we really are, we're here to serve. And um, I am a witness or I'm an example of what the chamber can do for someone in their career and their personal growth. And so I am an advocate of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And I'm always about sharing that from the rooftops and letting people know how you can dial into this chamber and when you really commit and you use the resources, it's tremendous. Um, you know, some of the things that General Ayala touch, touched on was for the first time ever, we had a Spanish webinar. And I think that's so important because the Latino community is so, so prominent in who we are, right? That's just our culture. And when we don't connect with that, sometimes they feel left out, right? And we don't want that. We are about inclusion and we're about bringing people together and giving everyone a platform to have a voice. And so when we look at being creative and stepping outside of our normal thinking outside the box, that's what we're doing. And that's what this Hispanic Chamber is doing for our community. So I'm really happy to see that when we talk about pivoting, everybody had to pivot their business one way or another. Um, we certainly did from day one when we saw so many things coming up and you know, looking ahead, we were just, we knew that it was gonna be a rough road. And so immediately we started to think, how can we stay ahead of this curve? And the Hispanic Chamber has done that as well. And I think that our staff has been very, very vocal um, and very creative. We also had our first webinar around government contracts. And as a small business, I was sharing this with Dr. Erica earlier. When I got into um, the position I'm in, it was very difficult for me to understand how do I break the barriers and the chains in order to get into working with small business or to work with government and the government contracting. And to this day, it's still somewhat challenging. And so I was really excited to see that we put together a webinar and a session that was answering questions around how do you do that? What are the first steps? Um, had I had that 10 years ago, five years ago, I think we would be in a different position when we talk about contracting. So I'm really, I was really excited to see that we were doing this. So, you know, today's session is about the chamber, right? And everything that we're doing and how we're working to bring this community together, especially during this time. And I'd love to just reiterate that when you join the chamber, you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. And it's all about making those connections, being a part of these webinars. I will tell you that it's been somewhat challenging to try to get on every single one of them because there's been quite a few. So that's exciting to know. Um, but you know, pick and choose the ones that really fit what you're doing, the ones that work for you. And I think also look for the webinars and the sessions and Zoom meetings that are gonna benefit you and you're gonna be able to extract information from and then apply it to your business. We've got a lot of different resources, even though things are still so uncertain. Um, I think that we're still having to look towards the road for the fall. 
Um, I, we're coming into the summer already and a lot of businesses are trying to figure out what that summer is going to look like and what is the fall going to look like and what is the winter going to look like and I think it's just really being creative. Um, really that's, I don't have much to say other than I think we've got so much happening over with the chamber that this is all about what are we doing, how are we moving forward and you know how can we continue to help so that's that's what i have to say thank you um thank you general yala dr gonzalez denise for your leadership we posted this the information for our webinar on facebook and and through the chat feel free to if you have any questions to please continue that one question we received through Facebook earlier was as a small business we are struggling and I think we see that in in the polls as well that we took earlier which I will share the results with everyone in just a second um, but how do I get involved with the chamber and what type of flexibility is there available um, regarding membership General Yalo, would you like to answer that question um um, what I want to do is we have, uh, we certainly understand, first of all, how do you get involved with the chamber? Uh, you know, you can go to our website, you can call us, uh, we will certainly reach back to you. Um, and, or you can talk to other members. Uh, I've got Philip uh, Sanchez here and I'll let him, uh, uh, continue. The other thing too, is we realize, uh, the situation that the small, uh, that our small businesses are in, and that's why we continue to advocate. Uh, and promote, and we want to make you better uh, in this community. I mean, we, you'll have access to other members. You'll have other access to uh, marketing and advertisement that you wouldn't otherwise get. And again, I'll, I'll repeat, I understand uh, what everybody's going through, and we've uh, made our, our membership flexible uh, to where, uh, you know, we, on the payment plans. And so we're trying all creative ways to make sure that not only uh, you join our chamber, but that it's, uh, it, it adds value to your organization. Um, and Philip uh, Sanchez and Leonard uh, Rodriguez have been working very hard on this, and they've come up with some great ideas. I'll let Philip, I'll let you chime in a little bit. Uh, thank you, General Ayala. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so happy that you could be a part of this, and we appreciate your time. Uh, so, uh, as the general was saying, we were definitely, uh, you know, trying to stay creative, um, you know, with with all with all the time that, you know, we're we're uh, spending at home and out of the office. It's giving us a lot more time to be creative, uh, and we have to be creative right now. So, one thing that we're we're really trying to do is to anticipate the needs of uh, future members, of our current members, and past members. Uh, and one thing that uh, we, we have come up with is um, lowering the investment level by $50 um, for uh, members that are interested in our general levels of membership. We're adding, uh, we're adding value to those uh, levels as well. And we are accepting, as the general mentioned, uh, payment plans uh, for up to two payments uh, for uh, a membership with us. Um, and to join, it's, it's very simple. Um, it's just an application process. Uh, we accept everyone. We're a very diverse chamber. Uh, and we're always happy to help connect you or point you in the right direction uh, or even counsel you one-on-one uh, you know, -on -one to make sure you get the help you need to see that your business succeeds. Uh, ultimately, that's what we want. And I like that Denise said, you know, we are the people's chamber. Uh, that's exactly what we are. Uh, we're here for our small businesses as well as our large corporations who uh, just want to ensure the success of our community as a whole. Um, so, so that's what I have. So thank you so much. I did include my information uh, in the chat bar. So if you'd like to uh, reach out to learn more about membership or to receive a fillable application, uh, please feel free to email me or call me at the number that's listed there in the chat. Uh, if you have other questions, uh, again, please feel free to reach out always happy to help. Sophie, can I touch on something really quick um, for the people that are listening and are interested in the chamber? The beautiful thing about our chamber is that you have direct access to our executive staff, um, even our executive board, our board member. We are a very large organization. We have a lot of people who are committed. And I love that when you join the chamber, 
you become a part of a family that is just all hands on on deck, right? Um, perfect example is, you know, we mentioned this um, weekend Fiesta drive through. We had people volunteering, calling us and saying, hey, we want to come help you. And as a small business, it was super overwhelming to have that love and support from our community. Said, we don't want anything in return. We just want to help you. We understand what the small businesses are going through and we're here for you. And we wouldn't have that support had it not been for the relationships that we have built within the chamber the past few years. And so I highly encourage anyone who's interested in joining, join. And if you want to connect and have any questions, you know, please feel free to share my information as well with anyone who's interested. Thank you for that, Denise and, and Philip as well. I think that really touched on one of the questions that we had received earlier um, through a Facebook message is what differentiates the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber from other chambers in San Antonio? As you guys know, there's, there's a lot of different chambers in San Antonio, but I think Denise really touched on why we're very different and very special. And it's not just of staff and leadership, but it's also members that really go out and making sure that we are a family and help each other out. I know a lot of board members do exclusive business with other board members and other businesses that are part of that. And so I think those are the types of relationships that you get from, from being here. Um, we do have one question that uh, through the chat from a Javier Ramon. He said, I'm working on a proposal for the Air Force and need some assistance to navigate through the process. Can I contact the chamber to get assistance with this matter? Absolutely, Javier. Um, there's Philip's information there. I'm more than happy to share my information at the end as well, and I can reach out to you privately after this is over. Um, so you can let us know, you know, what are your issues? How do you need help? And then point you in the right direction, whether it's personal assistance um, and making sure you have those resources for a successful proposal. Um, another thing, um, a separate question that I had received was, how does the chamber advocate for small businesses and have my best interests in mind advocating for us? This is just an open question to Denise, General, Dr. Gonzalez, whoever would like to answer. I can I can chime in a little bit here. So um, in addition to the stuff that the general and uh, Denise mentioned about, um, you know, this being very much a organization that feels more like a family and helping each other out. One of the things that we really strive to do um, is to make sure that we are gathering the information that we need in order to help our members and in particular our small businesses. Um, so during this whole pandemic crisis, we've been very alert and Sophie's been an integral part of this to make sure that we know what's going on both at the local level and at the federal level so that we can then pass that information on to our members you know, as best as possible. Uh, we've been following council sessions. They've been having two meetings a week so that we know what's going on here locally. Um, we have a great partnership with the United States uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, who has a wealth of connection and knowledge in knowing um, what our small businesses can be doing right now and positioning themselves to make themselves successful. Uh, with them, we've been able to uh, be involved in plenty of webinars, including um, with our SBA director, uh, Jovita Carranza up in D.C., who just hands down very valuable information that then we can translate and give to our members um, as far as what we need to do in order to try to secure the PPP loan, as well as uh, you know, how to make sure that we're doing what we need to do in order to ensure that the, the loan is forgiven. Um, in addition, we know that there is both federal funding and local funding um, here in the city that will particularly uh, be set aside to help our small businesses. So we try to advocate on the local level to ensure that when they're making decisions on which programs or what grants um, they're going to be uh, uh, allowing that they remember the needs of our small business community um, as the economic engine of our city and how important it is for us to make sure that, that we keep them as healthy as possible to make it through this whole pandemic crisis. General Ayala, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Could you repeat the question again? 
Sure. It says, what does a chamber, how does a chamber advocate for small businesses and have my best interest in mind advocating for us? Yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, we advocate, we, we use every platform uh, that we have available to us to advocate for, uh, for, the, for small businesses. Uh, not only do we do it through our social media, we do it through our newsletter, uh, but we also uh, put our brand on uh, everything we do for our small businesses. You've got to remember the other thing about the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the San Antonio Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And yes, we're the oldest one, but you know, there's about 6,500 uh, chambers of commerce in the nation and less than 3% uh, percent have earned that five-star accreditation, which is the highest uh, rating in the industry. And we're the only Hispanic chamber, I believe, uh, to achieve this rating. So uh, when you, uh, when we advertise, when we market, uh, when we put uh, your name on social media, when we highlight you in some of our, we can't do it in events now, but we do it in some of our virtual events, uh, you're carrying that a brand with you. And I think that's very important uh, for you to remember. We're very proud of that brand. Uh, we're very proud of that accreditation. But we're also very proud of the fact that we can uh, give it to our members and, and that our members can carry that with them. So uh, you, when you, you come to this chamber, uh, you really do come to a chamber that's uh, renowned and, and proven. But we do, uh, and I've seen it. I've seen it in the last couple of months that I've been here, is that you know, we highlight members. We market for members. We talk to members one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that's the other thing. Uh, we have a very flat organization here. I pick up the phone all the time, and so do uh, every, everybody on my staff, and I receive calls. And you know what? That's, what, that's why we're a familia. That's why uh, we advocate for you. So, yeah, I think, I think we're doing a uh, – uh, can we do better? Of course we can do better, but we're doing a pretty good job, and we want to continue to do that. We need your feedback. Thank you, General, for that. Uh, Jamie Mangelstor from UT Health. Um, thank you for your question in the chat. She asks, UTSA has an SBDC COVID-19 business recovery accelerator. Is the SAHCC partnering with UTSA or other institutions to help our small businesses? We are. We actually have a call with UTSA tomorrow to talk about a, a future webinar specifically with SBDC. So be on the lookout for that. We have quite a few webinars in the works, so hopefully for through the end of the month. One of them is SBDC and UTSA. Another one is the Federal Reserve with Blake Hastings. I think one thing that a lot of folks wanna know is about the economy. Where are we? How do we feel about it? And thank you for all who answered the question. Um, as far as how confident do you feel about the economy will bounce back at six months from today. Um, we had 20 people vote and 55% said they were somewhat confident. And I think the, that's some great data and information of how do we make sure that our small businesses that we currently have stay in business in six months from today and stay in business a year from today given the current situation and current struggles that they're facing. Um, another one of our poll results that we had was, you know, have you applied or received any assistance for your small business? And 60, we had 15 people vote on that question and 60% said they haven't applied or received any assistance. So those are gonna be businesses that mean, that are gonna be struggling. And so how can we, as a chamber, make sure they have the resources they need. And if they do have resources like the payment protection program, which it seems that a lot of folks actually receive, that they understand the loan forgiveness aspect. I think that's another big question that small businesses have right now. And so we're really excited to, to partner with organizations that can provide clear understanding for the questions that businesses really have. So I just want to say thank you to all that who participated in our polls. This gives us instant feedback for us, um, especially as Texas is continuing to open. We have a lot of folks, you know, wanting to, to start going to events. And so we want to make sure not only do we feel comfortable, but that others feel comfortable attending such events. So thank you to all who voted 
on that other question that asked if we are to host an event following CDC guidelines or social distancing practices were observed and limited the number, how comfortable would you be attending? And you know, the majority of who voted right now that are on this, this virtual town hall said they weren't gonna be very comfortable. And I think that gives us very good instant feedback as we move forward of how do we develop programs and information for, for the, our members, our non-members, our community that really helps them what they need. So I just wanna provide those results for everyone that is tuning in as well and thank everyone for participating in that. Um, doesn't look like we have any more questions in the chat. Um, so can I, can I jump in real quick uh, following up on what you're saying? So um, one of the other things that I think that the Hispanic Chamber's role is, is to make sure that we're representing our members, we're representing our small businesses um, here in the city. Um, and so um, we uh, do our best to make sure that we're reaching out to all of the right people uh, to ensure that we're part of the conversation. Um, we reached out to both the Economic Development Department and Economic Development Foundation uh, to make sure that they knew that the Hispanic Chamber um, is eager to be a part of the solution um, and that we want to make sure that our members are um, a part of that as well. Um, I know that early on uh, EDD sent out a survey to try to assess what the immediate needs of our small businesses were. Um, and they relied on the chambers to get that survey out. So very early on, the city was basing what they were going to be focusing on um, as a result of the, the, re, the answers to the surveys that were sent out. Um, and the chambers, all of them uh, played a big role in ensuring that they got a good response rate from that. Recently, we had a meeting with Economic Development Department and part of what they were asking us to help them with um, to do is now that our small businesses do have um, or have had the uh, opportunity to apply for the PPP loans, uh, we know that not everybody has, but we do know that some have. Um, and from those that were awarded the loan, uh, they want to know how many of them feel comfortable enough to know what they need to do in order to ensure that the loan is forgivable. Um, and so that's something that we really need to survey our members about because this is another need. You have, we, you know, once you get the money, that's the first step. But in order to be able to help these businesses sustain, uh, we also need to make sure that at the tail end of that, they're not having to pay back uh, these loans that, that are supposed to be forgivable. Um, so those are the type of things that we try to assess among our members so that we know where to fill in the gaps. Um, so uh, we, as the general stated before, we do need feedback from um, our members and um, the community to know exactly where we can help you guys out. Uh, we will continue to be a voice for you guys in the community. Um, and so in order for us to be a voice that represents everyone well, uh, we do need your feedback in order to make sure that that we are uh, adequately expressing the concerns that that our small businesses have. Sobe, I want to comment kind of on what Erica said and take it back a little bit. I know we had someone on Facebook ask about advocacy. Um, you and I just had a conversation, I think, last week, right, about advocacy and on the loan forgiveness portion of the PPP. So as a small business owner, I think it doesn't surprise me to see that the poll results were higher um, when it came back in terms of the question of people need to understand how that loan forgiveness works, how the, what the guidelines are. Um, we've done a lot of research and we've asked a lot of questions and I think that they're, the guidelines are there, but we're hoping that they're going to change. And I sent Sophie an email and I got on the phone with her and I said, hey, Sophie, I need you to be a voice whenever you have an opportunity about how this loan forgiveness is gonna work for small businesses. Um, I think that every business is kind of, sec you know, they have their own sectors and segments. And for us, we're in the events business and we can't open our doors and have people come the minute we open our doors. We plan months in advance. So how the loan forgiveness program is gonna work for us is very different um, versus the way it would work for maybe a nail salon or a restaurant. You know, when you get funded, 
the clock starts ticking, right? And so I came to Sophie and I said, listen, we really need to take advantage of these discussions that come up around this loan forgiveness portion of the PPP. And the reason I mentioned this is because here's where the advocacy for small businesses come into play. People like Sophie, um, General Ayala, and even myself and Erica, we are part of the executive team, um, the executive board. And so we're able to bring these discussions to light and to, to just move it up the ladder and say, here's one of the concerns that small businesses are having. And when I shared it with someone else, they said, wow, we didn't even think about that. Um, events wasn't part of our radar. And so just keep in mind that the advocacy is very strong um, and it's there. And so that's just one example of what we do and how we do it. Thank you, Denise, for that. Um, let's do uh, some final comments from everyone, um, Denise and Dr. Gonzalez, as well as far as what's your vision for the next six months? So where do you hope to see not just yourself and your business as two small business owners, but where would you like to see San Antonio? Dr. Gonzalez, we'll have you go first. Sure. That I mean, I think that's a great question. It's a uh, one that takes a lot of reflection, that's for sure. You know, um, as I was stating a little bit earlier, it's hard to, to really know what's going to be happening in the next six months. Um, I think that everybody has a realistic expectation, um, even in some of the results that I saw from the polling questions that you posted, Sophie, um, in that we are all hopeful that uh, we're going to make it through this economic crisis successfully. Uh, but we all know that it's going to take at least a year for us to be back to where we were uh, pre-COVID. Um, and, and that can be a little bit longer, right? So we're, we're not going to expect a lot to be different in these next six months. Um, I think that I can speak from the healthcare perspective, where I hope that in the in next six months, we have a, a plateau of transmission of infection that we're able to maintain here in San Antonio of the, the rate of transmission, which I think the community has done an amazing job um, at actually uh, doing. Um, and so I think that our city leadership acted very early on to um, put restrictions on uh, with uh, sheltering in place um, and encouraging the social distancing. Um, I think that we're seeing right now the, the, the outcome of all the sacrifice that people made during that time. I know that it has not been easy but we're in the place that we are right now and we're in a good place because of the sacrifices that everybody made. So that I think that in the next six months, we'll continue to see what we've been seeing so far. We've been seeing the community come together. Uh, we've been seeing uh, people helping other people, small businesses helping other small businesses, um, us supporting local businesses. Um, and so I think that that's gonna be the new normal. I think we're gonna have an appreciation for local small businesses, local leadership, local healthcare, um, and realizing that, uh, you know, together as a community is, is we have to work together in order to keep uh, each other going. Um, and so I think it's going to be a new normal for us. Uh, but, you know, something that uh, looking back, we're all going to have an appreciation for how uh, wonderful our community is and being able to come together. Um, for us, the next six months actually puts us in November. And so it's that line of sight for for the fall and winter. We're hoping that once things start to lift and the community feels safe, it just takes that one person, that one event, that one comfort zone to say, okay, I'm I'm good with with doing some of the things that I've used, I've been used to doing. Um, still being very careful. You know, I'm a mother of four, and so I don't want anyone to get sick. I don't want my children to get sick, but I also need to keep my business running. I need to keep the economy going and I'm going to do my part. And so I'm hoping that within the next six months, we're going to see for us events coming back to place. You know, people are still going to be celebrating. Weddings are still going to be happening. Um, we, and we want to encourage that, but we want to encourage it in a very safe way. And as a business, we are getting creative and we're pivoting and we're thinking of ideas to push forward and say, what does that look like? How can we still celebrate in the safest way possible? And so for 
for us in the next six months, that takes us to November. And, you know, honestly, November is one of our busiest seasons. And so we're looking forward to, to having a busy season. We're looking forward to the community coming together in a very safe way and coming back to um, just to our culture. You know, Erica started off with, we are a community who loves to hug and kiss. And it was really hard for us in the beginning to walk into a room and be like, oh, stay away. You know, I think it took me a long time to just either do the fist bump or the elbow hit um, because they were just not used to it. And I know that we're just not used to to staying back. And so we've done our part and we're gonna to continue to do our part. Um, but I really encourage everyone to do it in a very healthy way. And hopefully I'm, I'm optimistic that our economy is gonna come back. Um, we employ a lot of people and so we have to be, right? Because everything that we do provides jobs for other people that allows them to take a paycheck home to their family. And ultimately that's been our goal since all this happened is being creative. And we will be very creative in the next six months to come. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, for that. Once again, my name is Sophie Torres. I'm Vice President of Policy and Business Advocacy at the Hispanic Chamber. Thank you all who tuned in. I will be um, sharing these results we'll, internally. Our team will be looking at these results as well, the polls that you guys have graciously answered for us. Um, and we really appreciate you taking some time out of your day and tuning in. General Ayala, any final words so we can close out? Hey, uh, yeah, I just uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a privilege for me to sit here, you know, however long or short I'm here. And uh, while we're here, we're going to do everything we can uh, to support our members and to do everything we can to ensure that, uh, you know, we add value to their organizations. And, and, and we're here. Uh, we're always, we've been here since day one and we'll continue to be here. So thank you, uh, Sophie, for putting this together and the rest of the staff that uh, helped uh, with everything today. And uh, thank you very much. Again, thank you so much for everyone and y'all have a great day.